my name is Alexa and welcome to Bloom and Wilt Gardens. We're located here in Zone 6A Northeast Ohio and today I have for you a June garden tour. We have went several weeks without rain and I was getting a little nervous about my garden because things weren't really growing. Luckily nothing was dying off because I heavily mulch and I have some methods in place to ensure that in times of drought I am preparing my garden to be able to sustain itself during that time. And I did just share a video on those tips. If you wanna go check that out, I'll make sure to link it below. But we have just experienced um, three days of deep rain. Um, it was really nice just for me even to have those days of rain and um, just kind of being cozy in the house, not really doing a whole lot. I have been go, 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 go for like the last month just trying to get this garden in um, amongst other social engagements that just happens with this time of year. So many of us in Northeast Ohio, we spend the winters where we're kind of cooped up in our houses and uh, avoiding the cold snowy weather that we get. Um, and once it gets warm, it's like all systems go, we have to cram everything in in our very short season uh, and it was really nice just to like relax and kind of do nothing for the last few days but with all of the rain came growth in just three days like things grew and took off in just three days with that rain and I am so tickled and um, I just I want to share it with you uh, so let's go ahead and get into this garden tour so we'll start over here with the brassicas where I have kohlrabi broccoli and Brussels sprouts so this year I'm growing both purple and green varieties of kohlrabi. If you're not familiar with what kohlrabi is, it reminds me of a cabbage cross with like an apple. Um, it has a very cabbagey kind of taste. We like to eat it raw or you can cook it, but this is a really good spring crop. I've had pretty good success with this in the past. Um, it is a very different plant. Not a lot of people are familiar with kohlrabi. If you're looking for something new and different to try, definitely would recommend growing that in a um, for a springtime crop. So you can just start to see where it's rounding out right here. And this is where that large ball is going to form, which is the actual kohlrabi. And right here we're looking at a purple variety. And this one here is the green variety of kohlrabi. Looks very similar. Um, and the only difference that I found is just the color. Tastes pretty much the same. In this bed, I had some carrots that overwintered. And I left them in the bed here so that they could flower and set seed. Look how tall these are. So if you want to save seeds from your carrots, <clears throat> carrots will grow a flower like this in their second season. So any carrots that I plant this year, they're not gonna flower. If I leave them in the ground over winter and then next year, they will grow up a big stalk like this and set all of these blooms. Um, now these are just starting to bud, but when they are ready to flower, it'll be a big white poof. And we'll let those dry out and then we'll have just hundreds, if not thousands of carrot seeds. Because I like to do some color variety in my beds, I have my purple kohlrabi, and then I have a row of green sprouting broccoli. That's what this is. And all of these plants look very similar at this stage. And then I have a row of purple cabbage, and this is the red rock cabbage variety. But what's nice when we look at it from an artistic perspective, we have the green, the purple, the green, and the purple. So it's an alternating color. And it just adds some variety to a space that otherwise may just be kind of basic with a green plant. I just like how that looks. Immersed in this first bed, I have all kinds of volunteers that have come back up from last year were reseeded. Like this is an amaranth. I did sow some sunflower seeds. Uh, this is the Sunflower Steve Van Gogh Fantasy Mix. So I do have those sprinkled all throughout here. 
I have lots of cilantro that reseeds in this area every year. It is starting to bolt now. Cilantro doesn't like heat, so this is one of the first herbs that bolts in the late spring. And I have these beautiful heads of lettuce all throughout this garden area as well where it has reseeded. I'm not sure of what this variety is. I'd have to go back in previous garden tours to remember what variety this was, but it reseeds. And I've got one there. It's growing in my walkways, a bunch over there. And what I'm finding is I really enjoy uh, lettuce greens as being kind of like a ground cover. If you let lettuce go to seed and just self seed itself all over the place, I would just say let it grow in your garden beds. And even if you don't need to eat it or pick it all, um, it does act as a great weed suppressor. It's pretty, it's very pretty. You know, it's very easy too, because again, lettuce just kind of reseeds itself pretty well. Um, I haven't planted any lettuce in this space for probably two years. This just comes back up on its own, and I do let a couple of the heads go to seed and flower. And then the next year, I've got all this lettuce growing. So even if I didn't want to start my own lettuce, um, I have an area where it just starts itself, and it looks really pretty too. So on this arch trellis here, on this side I have some vining flowers that are just starting to germinate and pop up. And on this side I put in red Malabar spinach. It's a heat tolerant variety of spinach, but it vines. So it's actually a climbing spinach, um, a little bit different than your normal spinach, um, but kind of like a similar texture, similar taste and it's meant for the heat. So all of these little sprouts here will climb up my trellis and we will get some version of spinach for the summer. Now down in this bed, I have um, green and red Brussels sprouts. I've yet to have a very good crop of Brussels sprouts in the summer. They just bolt before they actually form anything and I've tried growing them in the fall and I can't get the plants large enough before it freezes. So this year, I feel like I'm in a pretty good space with how all these Brussels sprout plants look. They seem to be a good size. So I'm hopeful that this year we'll get some Brussels sprouts. And then I have ground cherry volunteers that are coming up all over in this bed of one here, uh, one there, one there, one there. <laughs> Last year was the first year I did ground cherries and my friend Ashley from Rivlo Acres, she gave me some plants and she has this bed in her garden that has now become dedicated to ground cherries because once you plant them, they will come back year after year. And I was a little bit um, wondering like, are mine gonna come back? And it did take a little bit, but they're all popping up now. And I'm pretty excited because I really love ground cherries and I've never been successful of starting them from seed myself, but they seem to reseed themselves pretty well. Um, so we will have lots of ground cherries. This little bird is nesting in this birdhouse gourd. And here's a better look at what the cilantro looks like when it flowers. And I mean, this is why I just leave it because it's so beautiful and to get some nice early flowers in the garden, it's pretty cool. So I will just let all of this turn to seed and I can collect those seeds and keep them as coriander. Um, so I may do that, but mostly I just kind of let the seeds fall and it reseeds itself and then it comes back up every year. Now in the front entrance, I have these two cinder blocks beds and I am growing giant Prague celery seed I got from MI Gardener and this celery is different in that you're eating the root so it makes like a really big root ball and that's kind of the part of the plant that you are eating and this has been taking a long time to grow I started the seedlings for this celery like back in March transplanted it out in early April 
and it has taken a very long time to get going but with the rain we just got it seems that they're starting to take off um, I don't know what this is it's some volunteer squash plant a couple years back I grew a patty pan squash in this bed and I'm thinking that's what that is but I just left it and then I also have an oregano plant here so I like to intersperse herbs with different crops now I know this squash plant might take over a lot of this area I haven't quite decided if I'm gonna keep it move it or just take it out completely and I also put in a fennel plant as well because I just like to have variety in my beds and then going up the trellis will be yard long beans these are the green color and these are going to be really long beans like I'm talking two feet long beans um, they're so cool looking they look great in an arch trellis so these are just starting to take off so I like to maximize the space in my entire garden that includes growing a lot of crops up along my outer fence lines and so over the years I have worked on expanding my garden and making beds in pretty much every possible area that I could. So this is one of my newer, more established beds up at the front of the garden along the front fence line. So up along the fence I'm growing snap peas and then I have a row of white potatoes and then I have a row of bush beans and then I have a row of basil and some herbs. Again, a lot of these things you may not typically see planted together, and I'm not doing any kind of intentional companion planting. I don't know if peas go well with potatoes, go well with beans per se. They may, they may not. I don't really follow any of that stuff too much. Um, but what I do like to do is just put in a variety of different plants in different areas, and I find that that just helps diversify that little micro ecosystem. I also like to grow cats in my garden <laughs> now last year I sowed some wildflower seeds all in this space this came up and it never flowered last year and it didn't get this big but it came back up this year so I left it out of curiosity to see what happens I don't know what this plant is so if you know what this plant is I would love to hear from you I mean, it very well could be some kind of weed that I don't want in my garden. I am really not sure what it is, but it is very big. You can see it takes up a lot of surface area. So I'm just kind of letting that be and seeing what happens. And over here is where I'm planting squash. I wasn't sure if I wanted to try and do squash this year because I have a horrible time with squash bugs, but I couldn't resist and I'm going to try again with my squash every year. And I have a tromboncino squash there in the back. I've got uh, zucchinis, patty pan, butternut squash, and delicata. So each one of these mounds is a different squash variety. I put the summer squash up in the front because I know we're going to be picking off those sooner rather than later and so I want them easily accessible and then the winter squash like the tromboncino and the delicata I put those more in the back because those are going to sprawl out vine they're going to climb up and support themselves on these fences here and I won't really be touching those too much so I keep those in the back Over here are all of my raspberries, so we will be harvesting some raspberries in early July. So my garden's small farm uh, is located pretty much in the middle of the town where I live. Um, I've got neighbors on all sides of me, um, pretty busy street, we've got big trucks that come by all the time and there's a fire station and library up the road and it's just kind of very bustling so all of the sounds of the town that you can hear um, is pretty much just daily and I really like that we have this nestled space right in the middle of all of that because it does help me you know show and share with people that you can do quite a lot on a smaller space now we do have 
um, just under three acres of property, but a lot of it is actually wooded and um, a creek runs through it and it's very um, hilly, so it's not really usable a whole lot. So my gardening space is about 2,000 square feet. I grow a lot of food in this space in the middle of town. I think it's just cool to show that like you don't have to have um, a big farm in the middle of the country to do what we're doing here. You can nestle yourself in your gardens and your farm and your chickens, you know, even in the middle of town. So in this bed here, I'm growing Jersey Wakefield cabbage. Cabbage has been another one of those crops where it's just been difficult for me to grow it in the past. I never seem to get the timing just right in the spring, it usually bolts before it forms a head or the cabbage moss um, and worms eat all of it. And in the fall, my plants just don't get large enough to be able to withstand the freezing temperature. So all of these plants, I started in early March, transplanted them out um, like the first or second week of April. And yeah, these are doing good still too. So I'm pretty pleased to see the progress on these cabbage plants. And now here, this kind of weird looking thing is a beet plant that is going to seed. I had beets in this bed last year. Um, I must have missed one because I had beet greens growing this spring. But when I planted all the cabbage, I left the beet plant because I want the seeds. Um, I do typically buy beet seeds, but if I can grow some myself and save them and replant them, that's even better. So this is what um, a beet plant looks like when it's getting ready to set flower and go to seed. And then I do have some lettuce varieties. I think this is butter crunch lettuce tucked in on the sides of this bed. So I really like to use as much space as possible. So things that don't take up a lot of room or have really shallow root systems, I'll tuck in along the edges of my beds. So I have a bunch of lettuce. Now growing on the arch trellis here is Armenian yard long cucumber. So I've got two here, two on the other side mixed in with the asparagus bed. And after I transplanted this, I was a little nervous because that was during our time of like no rain, but it seems to be recovering well after getting a good soaking. So these will grow um, very long cucumbers. I think they can be like a foot long or more. Um, this is my first year really growing the Armenian yard long, so I'm pretty excited to see how these do and growing up the trellis and more cilantro. So that recedes just about everywhere. And then on this side, this is where our asparagus bed is. Now I have let it go to seed. So this is what asparagus starts to look like when you don't cut it. It turns into this really big ferny plant and it's just starting to do that now. But in a few weeks, this whole space here will be bushed out with these giant ferns. So when we do our next garden tour, you'll probably get a good idea of what the asparagus looks like. But we let that do that because now that I'm done picking off of it, it needs to grow out, collect the sunlight, store energy for next season. And it will also create seeds that fall down. And in this bed, I let it kind of get a little wild. I've got wild strawberries in here, different kinds of clovers. It just seems to do pretty well with the asparagus and it keeps down on a lot of kind of grassy and other weeds that I don't really want. So in my circle garden bed this year, I have put in sweet potatoes, I have okra planted in here. Um, I think I threw in some sunflower seeds, a lot of different flowers in pretty much all my garden beds. If I wasn't sure if I planted something or not, I just kind of sprinkled like zinnia seeds or marigold seeds. So I just want flowers everywhere. And then up my obelisk is going to be a, it's called a cardinal climber. Um, it's kind of similar to a morning glory plant, um, but it, it's, a, it's a climbing flower plant that has vines and the flowers are red and orange. So I'm just waiting for those seeds to germinate and this is a really cool centerpiece once it's completely covered in flowers in the middle of summer. And as you can see, more volunteer lettuces that kind of put themselves in my pathway. 
volunteer cilantro. In the spirit of letting things recede, this is an onion. Look how big this stalk is. That's huge. So this was an onion that I left in the ground over winter and it is setting a bloom. So this will be a flower and will produce seeds for us to save onion seeds. So by the next garden tour, that should be in bloom. I've got one more over there. And yeah, so this onions, they um, seed in their second year as well. And I have this red mustard green and I'm really not sure where it came from. I think I may have gotten it in a seed swap, but this came up last year and this is another one that I just let go to seed and it reseeds itself really good. So this bed has some volunteer mustard greens and then I transplanted them a bunch on the other side of the garden. So those are just going to be everywhere as well. Some sunflowers that are coming up and I'm pleased to see that my sweet potato vines are recovering. I grew my own sweet potato slips this year. I had a sweet potato from the grocery store that um, started to grow vines. And I just let it, <laughs> like why not? Um, and I kind of babied that sweet potato and all the vines it grew through the winter and planted it this spring. And with the, with the drought we were having, I, thought that they were dying because I mean all the leaves were looking like this and turning brown and crisping up but they seem to be recovering and growing now yeah see that's kind of how they were looking but they're getting new leaves there down at the bottom and this is a seedling of that cardinal climber I'm not finding too many of them so I just see this one and this one I might have to put down some more seed it looks like several marigold seeds are coming up in there and here we have some okra seedlings. This is the Clemson spineless okra. It's a pretty common variety. Okra really isn't a common crop in Northeast Ohio. I don't really ever see it anywhere or to hear people talking about growing okra. And okra really needs very hot environment, which we don't always have that. And uh, so yeah, I've never really had a great success with okra, but I try growing it anyways because it's different. It's different for us anyways. So I've got an artichoke plant. Artichokes are another one that does really well in the heat. Not as much here in Ohio. Um, I did have some good oak artichokes about two years ago, but this would be a perennial um, in a warmer climate. However, it gets too cold for okra. Fennel marigolds, basil. I've got basil just kind of tucked in all over the place. Um, we have another cat growing cats all over the garden. It's actually the same cat. She likes to be part of the garden. So in this space over here, I had a cover crop all along here because this whole area just hasn't been very successful in the last couple years with growing. I had a lot of wood chips here and was trying to do like a back to Eden gardening thing. Um, and it just didn't really seem to work out in the way that I had hoped. So I put in a cover crop, tilled that in a few weeks ago. And what I'm doing in this area now is I have a few mounds here and then two over there, you can see them, of melons. I've got Kajari melon, cantaloupe, and some watermelon. Um, Melons have not been very successful in my gardens, but I continue to try and experiment every year and see what I can do. And then here in these rows are a popcorn variety that was given to me during a seed swap. Um, I believe it was called Uncle Jim's Popcorn and it came from a family that is in, that was from um, either like Wyoming or Montana. So I'm trying out their popcorn and I'm essentially doing like a modified three sisters garden in here. I guess it's just a two sisters um, because I have the corn and then all of my melons will sprawl around the ground around it. Um, and then typically in a three sisters, you would also do pole beans, but I don't really want to do pole beans over here. So it's a two sisters garden with popcorn and melons. And then back here, I've got 
white potatoes. And I'm also trying again to plant corn on top of the potato mounds. Um, I tried that last year. I had some bird issues and I didn't get any corn. Um, so I'm gonna try that again and see if I can get corn to grow right next to on top of the potato mounds. And then in this half moon bed, I have fennel sunflowers. So I kind of wanted tall, wispy things because um, people, my children, <laughs> tend to walk in this garden bed because it is kind of low and maybe in an awkward place. So I wanted to grow really tall things that I couldn't get stepped on. And it appears I have a volunteer, I'm going to guess cucumber plant because I did grow some cucumber over here. This bed has onion and red romaine lettuce. This is the Rouge de Hiver lettuce tucked along the side. So these onions have been in here for about three months now. And it looks like they're starting to round out a bit at the base. So this is my in-ground greenhouse. I would say it's about 12 by 20, something like that. And I grow tomatoes and peppers in this. And then in the winter time, for the last two seasons, we have been keeping our chickens in here over winter. So it's been like a really nice dual purpose space. Keeping the chickens uh, in there over winter allows them to really fertilize the soil very well. And then in the spring, we move the chickens out back and then I can plant my tomatoes and peppers. So my tomatoes, I planted in here the last week of April. So that was about three weeks before it was safe to plant anything outside. And my peppers went in about two weeks after that. So it just gives me some season extension on the front and the back end. I can plant my tomatoes sooner and I can keep them in here longer. So um, I use this greenhouse right up until about I think the last week of October last year, I was still picking tomatoes and peppers out of here. So it really does uh, help with the season extension. Um, I don't heat it. I don't do a lot of extra watering in there too, because this space behind me, um, the ground is more damp. So the plants really have everything they need to survive. They just pull the water from the soil. Um, on really hot days, I do keep the doors open in the front and back for ventilation, but it's been a little bit on the cooler side, so I've kept them closed. So it's pretty exciting how big these tomato plants are, especially compared to what my tomato plants look like on the other side of the garden. I mean, these are so big. They have beautiful flowers and I did spot um, a little tomato starting to come on. And so this is the Trip L crop variety of tomato in here. I found that that grows really well in a greenhouse environment. So that's what I focused on. And then I also did some planting of bush beans in front of them just to see what happens to utilize the space and to get some beans planted earlier before our last frost date. Yep, so I've got a little tomato bud already coming on, which is pretty early. And then in here, I do also have tucked in our some more cucumber plants. I don't know if they're really gonna get enough light to grow. Again, experimenting, seeing what I can do and pack into this space. And then on the other side is where I'm growing a bunch of peppers. So I have all kinds of varieties. I've got lemon spiced jalapenos, pumpkin spice jalapenos my friend Sarah gave me, shishito peppers, gypsy pepper, carmen pepper, habanadas, cayenne pepper, scotch bonnet, and a bunch of ghost peppers down there which are still pretty tiny. I'm, I'm not sure how they're gonna do. Ghost peppers need a lot of heat. That's why they're in here. Um, but they seem to be the slowest growing ones compared to everything else. But overall, they look pretty good. I have been having a little bit of an aphid issue. So I gotta get in here with some diatomaceous earth and put that over these. Yeah, you can see this one has some aphids. And I do find that growing anything, anytime I grow anything in a greenhouse environment, that's when I have the aphid problem because the rain isn't in here washing it away. So I need to get some diatomaceous earth in here. Um, I could also get ladybugs. They will enjoy 
the aphids as well. But this is a really handy space and gets me some food on our table a lot faster. So this is the first year I've ever grown baby's breath. And let me tell you, I am here for this. <laughs> it is like the most beautiful, dainty, delicate little flower and it is so pretty. So I've put that in some of my pots and I just put seeds in these pots here so I can have more baby's breath because it's so pretty. But try to get some color in here and bought some flowers mixed in with lettuce greens, amaranth, basil. Again, I just kind of put everything in. This whole space next to the greenhouse, I put in zinnia and sunflower seeds. So I'm really hoping that we get a nice pop of color in that. And then back here, I have more lettuce growing in the cinder blocks and then I just sowed some cucumber seeds and I've got little cucumelons plants in here they had a really hard time with that bad drought so now I'm hoping that they recover and start to grow and on the other side I'm attempting to grow jelly melon again didn't have much luck with it last year but I've got two little seedlings. On the back side of the greenhouse are my metal raised beds. Uh, these have been not on the priority list. I had so much other gardening space to fill in that I just have not been able to get to these yet. These probably will be mostly used for fall crops since I don't really have a plan for them right now. Um, I do just need to get them filled. I've got cardboard underneath to help suppress the grass. You can see over here the grass is popping up on this one. I'm going to fill them probably with some twigs and sticks first um, and then soil on top. And then back here are our chickens. So we'll keep them right next to the garden. And that lets me give them all of the plants and scraps that we don't want. So looking at the other side of the garden, um, I've got more potatoes, so I've got three rows of red potatoes in here and we did a video planting these together a few weeks ago. Uh, so this is what they are looking like now. They're starting to get the greens coming up. So pleased to see that. I had garlic in this space last year and some bulbs got left behind. So this garlic is from last year and it's just setting scapes. I think I'm just gonna leave it and let these seed um, so I can save some garlic seed. I haven't tried that yet. And then I also have some onions that I just put in next to these potatoes cause I had extras and I needed to get them in somewhere. Lots of volunteer sunflowers too. Every year I have a sunflower volunteer right here. Happy to see that it came back. And I got some nice strawberries. This bed is carrots. So these are starting to come up now and start to grow. Nice little frilly carrot seedlings. Uh, lots of weeds in here. So once the carrots get a little bit bigger, I'm gonna come through and thin out the carrots and weed and then get some kind of mulch on top of this because otherwise it's just going to be a weedy mess very quickly. And then I've got two 80 foot rows of tomatoes and I feel like I could do a video just on my tomatoes. I have 21 varieties I think I'm growing of tomatoes this year. Um, so I've got a lot of tomatoes in here. 60 plants. I'm not going to go through each one today but they are needing to get tied up now. Uh, so that'll be on my to-do list. They have been looking pretty pathetic <laughs> just because again, we had no rain for so long. They were just barely holding on. Um, but with three days of rain, they are really taking off and ready to get tied up. So I will have to do that pretty soon. And what I do is I string tie them. So these are seven foot Re, um, seven foot T-post and I will tie a string from the top down to the base of the tomato plant and then as the tomato grows I kind of twist it around and up. Um, I do have a video on how to put all this together um, so I will link that below. It's a pretty useful way of supporting your tomatoes especially if you're growing a lot. Um, I've enjoyed it this way the most and 
it allows more flexibility for me to kind of move things around each year because it's not hard to set up i could set this up by myself i purchased all the materials myself and put it together myself um so it's an easy one person job i've got two more beds of peppers the same varieties that i have in the greenhouse um, but i grew 60 pepper seedlings so half of them are in the greenhouse and half are outside the ones that are outside are a little bit smaller than the ones in the greenhouse again because they are not in as much heat and peppers really like heat here in a couple weeks i'm sure they will start to take off as our temperatures get warmer in this bed i have beets growing so those as well have been kind of slow slow going some lettuce that is the black seeded simpson and i put in some radish several weeks ago but it didn't seem it's not really seeming to be bulbing the way it should so i don't think i'm gonna have much success with the radish this spring so right now I'm really enjoying this whole garden space. I kind of have this horseshoe bed that I built out of bricks um, with a middle section and these are all of our spring greens. So I put these in very early in April before our last frost date because this is all stuff that can handle um, light frost. So temperatures like down to 30 degrees, all of this survived just fine. Um, but I have Swiss chard, dinosaur kale. It's so fun. I just have love how it looks. You'll see this often in like the olive garden, like Tuscan soups. Really easy to grow yourself. Purple kale, my Buna mustard greens, red mustard greens, a lot of onions, pink celery. This is a huge crop of my red mustard. Now, I've been thinking on how I want to use this because it is starting to set seed and so i got to cut all this down and i'm thinking i'm going to try making sauerkraut because it's very similar leaf texture to cabbage and i think i want to try and make a spicy sauerkraut these leaves are really spicy so that was something that i wanted to try uh, endive red romaine lettuce and i'm really not sure what i'm going to put in this space once it starts to get too hot for them um, but I know like Swiss chard, for example, does pretty well even in the summertime for me. So that'll probably keep growing. I'm sure a lot of the kale is going to bolt. But I do have tons of uh, Love Lies Bleeding Amaranth all throughout here because that just reseeded itself from last year as well. And also ground cherries. So I think we'll have probably enough going on in this space. And then in the fall, I'll replant this probably with more greens. I have a couple collard green plants. I didn't do too many this year because I only really need like one or two. Collard greens get huge and they grow very quickly once you cut the leaves. These also do really good over winter. So I had a collard plant that overwintered without, with just minimal cover and I was picking off of it in the spring. My Buna mustard green, that has already flowered. Um, I definitely don't want all of this to reseed, so I'll probably cut a lot back and maybe just leave a couple flowers. This is our pink celery. This is growing a bit quicker than the Prague celery. And then I've got a few pepper plants in here. Um, these are pepper plants that I overwintered in my house. So these I actually grew from seed in 2022. And then I dug the whole plant up out of the ground kept it in my basement in a pot all winter and then um, it started to grow again in the spring and I you know hardened it off brought it outside planted it um, this is my lemon spice jalapeno it does have some fruit on it already so really exciting to be getting peppers um, this early in the season it did have a bit of a transplant shock um, so I'm hoping the leaves start to green up I have a banana pepper plant and you can see lots of fruit setting on this one already i've actually already eaten a banana pepper so like it was like the last week of may and i was eating a pepper from my own plant which is pretty cool so my plan is to dig these out again this fall which is why they're in a different area um and overwinter them and 
if this keeps working out, I may just do practice of overwintering peppers instead of starting them from seed every year. I also have um, an orange bell pepper plant, which is a little bit smaller, but still much bigger than all of my new seedlings. This is all amaranth growing in my pathway. I don't want to leave it in the pathway. I just haven't decided where I'm going to put it yet. It's granat cabbage. It's kind of like a Chinese cabbage. It is starting to set seed before it is fully ready for harvest, so I may just cut it early. Over here has been an experiment growing strawberries in five gallon buckets. So I drilled all these holes last fall and I put in um, an ever bearing strawberry in these pots and over winter, um, these were left outside and they died. Um, all the strawberry plants that were in these, they died, they did not come back. So I replanted them with a June bearing strawberry that was still in ground, transplanted them uh, earlier this spring. Now I do have several berries coming on. I was a little nervous because with our drought, um, these buckets were drying out. I couldn't keep them moist and I wasn't seeing any berries, but it looks like they're coming along now. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do this fall. I think they might do better if I keep them in my greenhouse, but I just haven't had great success with strawberries because I haven't found a method of growing them that I really love yet. Uh, so I'm still trying to figure out the best way that I want to grow strawberries. Up here in the front bed, this has been, I don't think I planted anything in here last year. So this is new. Um, again, trying to maximize all my space. So this is a new area for planting and I am getting some pole beans growing up this side of the fence. I did try to get peas over here, but a lot of them didn't come up. So I do have a couple peas, but mostly they're going to be pole beans. I put in some dahlia bulbs, so they haven't sprouted yet. Lots of zinnias, just lots of flowers all in here. Lots of flowers. More of the granat cabbage. So we'll see. Some of them are starting to bolt. Some of them aren't. Um, and then I have this kind of flower variety. And so I grow it in these pots here, see? And they reseeded and now they're everywhere. I just don't remember what they are, but they're really pretty. I have to go back um, and see in 2022 garden tour what they were, but I just let it be. It's gonna be wild, it's gonna be full of flowers, and I'm pretty excited about that space. So over here is my mom's garden and I need to get her here for a video so she can give a proper tour but I did just want to kind of flash this area so it's right next to my garden and this was a space that was just grass um, we just mowed it and so last year um, we went ahead and let my mom start designing her own garden area um, and so she maintains all of this herself but she's got a lot of good things, really cool things going on in here. Um, she's working on creating some row covers to keep the uh, pests out of her plants. But this whole area is going to look really lovely. I mean, it already does look really nice. Very much a secret garden, kind of secluded and nestled here in the woods. We have a lot of tree cover over here, so it stays pretty shaded, but a lot of the plants actually are doing really good. Even like tomatoes and peppers that you think need more sun, they've actually done pretty well over here. So it's nice experiment to see kind of comparison how my garden does with the full sun compared to her garden that's more of like half sun and just see the difference in the plants. But a lot of things are doing really well. Just like these potatoes in here that overwintered. I mean, they're huge already, starting to flower. And then this is just a really lovely little area that she planted all kinds of flowers in here, like iris and hosta. Kind of gets goes nestled back there into the woods. So it's just a really nice, sweet little area. 
So we'll do a garden tour with Susan here in the future. And so the last thing I have for you today is the garlic patch. So we are starting to get our garlic scapes now. We've actually been picking on them, eating them. So we grow um, hard neck variety of garlic. I grow like four different kinds of garlic. It's music, Amish rocambole, uh, some kind of German variety. I don't remember the other one. I'd have to go back and look. And this year, I should have a harvest of about 600 bulbs of garlic. If each of those bulbs of garlic gives me five cloves, that potentially gives me 3,000 cloves of garlic. And what I would plan to do is save half of all of those cloves and then replant them this coming fall. Uh, that is how I have been doubling my garlic harvest every single year so I'm like on my fourth year growing garlic and I don't I try not to buy cloves I just replant half of my crop and if all goes well I could have over a thousand bulbs of garlic growing for next year so pretty exciting the garlic is doing very well so like these two rows here, I've already cut the garlic scapes off. We've eaten those. So I've just kind of been going down the rows as um, I'm harvesting. So I still have a lot of garlic scapes left to harvest. You can see the little curly cues all in there. If I didn't cut those off, what would happen is they would um, actually flower. So like this is the beginning of a flower head. This would turn into like a, a white little poofy flower and then seeds would grow. But when that happens, the garlic, the plant is now expending its energy trying to grow a flower and seed instead of um, making a nice large bulb. So that's why we cut those. We cut these so the plant's energy goes into making a nice large bulb instead of seeds. Cause I don't want garlic seeds. I want big cloves, but these are completely edible. So we cut these off and we eat them and I describe it as like a garlic flavored green bean. So it's crunchy like a green bean, but it tastes like garlic. Um, and we saute them, we eat them raw. Um, you can grill them, freeze them, turn it into pesto, dry it, make it into powder, like so many ways to use that. Um, I did a whole video last year on harvesting garlic scapes and some preservation ideas. I will link that below. Garlic truly is one of my favorite crops to grow. Um, it's, first of all, it's easy. So I plant it in October and then I just leave it alone. I don't really have to do anything with it at all until now in June um, is when the garlic scapes come on. And so I harvest those and then I leave it alone for another month. And then we pull up all the garlic and then I let them dry. Um, there is some fertilizing that happens in between all that, but honestly, I haven't even fertilized this year, so that could be of to my detriment, not getting as big of bulbs as I want. Um, there's still time, I can still fertilize. They like bone meal, um, and I have bone meal, I just gotta get out here and do it. And in my soil, all the root vegetables do really well in my soil because it's very sandy. I just enjoy garlic, we enjoy using garlic. Everything about growing garlic has been a positive experience. So I do have a lot of garlic related content, um, how to plant your garlic, uh, harvest your garlic, um, what to do with the garlic scapes, like lots of stuff on garlic. So if you're interested in knowing and growing garlic, um, I have a whole playlist with all of those videos included. So I will include that in the description so you can check out all of the garlic stuff. And I encourage everyone to try growing your own garlic. It's like I said, it's pretty easy. You can even do it in containers. Um, and it's really rewarding to have your own garlic. It tastes so much better than what you buy at the store. It's stronger, it has a bolder flavor. Um, it's just, I can't say enough about garlic. <laughs>
So thanks for joining me on today's garden tour, the June garden tour. Um, and it's mid-June, so we may be able to get um, another June garden tour in, or at least early July. If you are local to the Asheville County, Ohio area, I will actually be having an in-person garden tour here on July 30th, that's a Sunday from 2 to 4 p.m. Um, reservations are required. This is being hosted through the Ohio State University um, Extension Office through Ashabila County. And so I will include all of that information on my Facebook page, Bloom and Wilt Gardens, um, and it'll have the RSVP information if you are interested in coming to that. It is a free event. Um, there is limited space. So would be cool to have some of my watchers be able to um, meet you in person at that garden tour. Um, but if you are not local, I will still continue to do our virtual garden tours together. <laughs> if you enjoy these garden tours and home garden tips and videos and inspiration, consider subscribing to the channel, liking this video, and sharing it out with a friend. All of that helps my channel grow and keeps me encouraged to keep making content. Uh, I do really enjoy making this content and just want to share it out with as many people as possible. Have a wonderful day and try to do something you love today. Talk to you next time.